Hi there, it's Bill with Smart Trades. It's Thursday, September 23rd. It's around 9.35 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, right off the bat, let's take a look at our, our S&P chart and review our long-term uh, uh, picture here, or intermediate, I should say. Uh, we're looking for a rally still to around 11.57. Uh, it's certainly possible that uh, that's not gonna work out exactly, so uh, let's, let's take it one step at a time. But there is a, a so-called uh, secret gap up around that 1157 area, and that's also, uh, you know, the ideal Elliott wave scenario for a, an ABC correction back up, where uh, the C wave is equal to the A wave, right around that 1157 area. And again, October 5th would be the ideal uh, equality in terms of time between A and C. Uh, that said, I would look, uh, I'd watch very carefully next week. I, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see this thing top a little early, both in terms of time and price. But as always, we'll take that one step at a time. Now here's the uh, spiders. You can see that gap much more clearly on the spiders because they're actually calculated on, on real trades rather than, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically the, the S&P cash uses unchanged issues when it uh, calculates the opening. Moreover, it only calculates changes in the S&P 500 stocks four times per minute. So you, you're oftentimes going to see data that's just not reflective of reality on the cash. That said, it's a, a very good index to, to use longer term, but there are problems to be aware of. At any rate, again, 116 is the target on the spiders. Uh, I would start to look for that uh, uh, next week. And here's the NASDAQ. 100. The NASDAQ 100 is likely going to go somewhat higher. Uh, the next Fibonacci relationship for A, uh, C to A would be about 1.272. That comes in around uh, 2020 basis, the uh, uh, NASDAQ cash. Uh, that would also uh, fill a, a gap, a gap at a higher level, and very nicely fulfill the uh, uh, basic pattern of a, a flat type correction with the, the B wave almost uh, coming up to the previous uh, peak. Um, it's also an 89% retracement of this entire decline. Um, again, we're looking at next week, possibly the, follow the week of October 4th uh, for a peak. But as always, we'll take it one step at a time. And here is the S&P Cash hourly chart. Uh, as I've stated before, this count is definitely uh, up for argument. I am far from certain on the hourly basis, uh, you know, that this count is correct. That said, uh, so far the market is cooperating pretty well uh, with this particular count. We've got a triangle fourth wave, and the apex of that fourth wave is just below uh, today's decline. Ideally, uh, th this fourth wave is going to alternate. In other words, you've got a, uh, a relatively sharp wave two down. Wave four should be more of a sideways pattern. And if it's not, that's a little bit of a red flag. So what we might expect here is for uh, this pattern to morph into a triangle. Perhaps we'll go back up to the highs, come down one more time and form a flat. Uh, long story short, uh, wave four uh, should be more of a sideways type pattern uh, than a uh, you know sharper decline uh, as wave two was. So uh, worth noting. Also, uh, a couple days ago, Tuesday on the uh, uh, Fed uh, report, we had a sharp rally out of the uh, report, and you'll notice here that we had a bearish breath divergence. I, again, this is something I hammer all the time. These divergences are, are, are very telling, and uh, uh, oftentimes will show you when the market is ready to at least uh, make a pause, if not a, a direction change. And indeed, that was a very sharp divergence on that high, and from there we sold off. Uh, we are holding previous fourth wave support again. Uh, almost got to the apex of that wave four. We may yet get there. Again, if this is a flat, we could go back up and come back down one more time. Uh, right around that 1120 area basis, the S&P cash would be uh, uh, ideal for a flat. Uh, triangle may not get that low, obviously, because, uh, in fact, we may have seen the low of wave four if that's the case. That said, uh, uh, this count on the hourly is uh, a bit of a mess. Uh, it's not totally reliable to my way of thinking. And it's possible we may have topped. Uh, on that note, let's look here at the Russell uh, 2000, uh, the IWM uh, index. And, um, you know, basically the way that I count the, the Russell here, I, I count it as peaking, uh, has already peaked. And so uh, we have to be aware that perhaps even the broader market, excuse me, the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ uh, are peaking as well. 
uh, if they haven't already peaked. Um, looking here at the advanced decline line, you can see we are starting to uh, roll over. We've got uh, lower peaks relative to early September and sharply lower on this last rally. That said, you know, ideally, I, I still think we're going to see higher prices, particularly in the S&P. But I think this is the best uh, count on the Russell. And so it, and this would also fit with the, the breadth divergence in that the Russell really is the broader market relative to, say, the uh, S&P 500, the Dow 30, or the uh, NASDAQ 100. Now, here again is the China 25, the FXI. What I want to bring your attention to is the decline from 2007 to 2009 and a very clear ABC pattern indicating that that decline is corrective. Uh, the implication of that, even though this index ha is not that old, uh, is that ultimately we're going to uh, make new highs. Now also, please look at Google. Google, or as George Bush called it, the Google, uh, you know, has also carved out a near-perfect ABC decline. The, the patterns are remarkably similar. And I, I bring this to your attention because the, the thing that I've been looking at lately is how the Internet economy, in spite of, uh, you know, the President of the United States uh, while he was in power, uh, basically being a, an Internet illiterate, uh, grew by about $9 trillion o over his watch. Rather incredible. Uh, and it's expected to grow another $13 trillion over the next 10 years. Now, uh, about half of the Internet users and probably the majority of the growth in the Internet over the next 10 years is going to come from Asia. Uh, exactly how that's going to pan out, uh, I really don't know. But I think it's uh, the Internet has been underestimated and is still underestimated in terms of its impact on the overall economy, uh, you know, both in the United States and the world. Um, a little footnote, uh, yesterday I had lunch with a guy, very, very smart guy. He's a hedge fund manager. And uh, we we're talking about this very topic and the impact of the Internet. And he said, you know, I, I really don't buy anything on the Internet, you know, maybe a couple of books uh, on Amazon. And, uh, you know, after I thought about that, it occurred to me, you know, here's this very smart guy. And, uh, you know, his business is basically being run. His, his livelihood is, is gleaned by doing business on the Internet. And yet he doesn't even realize it. Uh, I think that that's kind of symbolic of, of the Internet in general in that I think people just take it for granted. They don't realize how it's impacting their lives. They don't realize how it's impacting uh, the world economy. And uh, I think incredibly after, a, a, you know, 10 trillion or so in growth, uh, that situation still exists to the, you know, to the highest powers in the land. Uh, uh, you know, most people just aren't seeing the Internet's impact. Um, and specifically here on Google, I think this is important to note that we have a very clear Elliott wave, uh, five waves down off of the uh, uh, peak uh, of that late 2009, early 2010. And from there, s we have a nice ABC up. This fits nicely with our count on the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ and the spiders. Top of the previous fourth wave, A equals C. They both come in around that 523 area, area basis, Google. The, uh, the pattern on Google indicates that higher prices uh, beyond that 523 area are certainly possible. Nonetheless, uh, the count at 523 fits nicely with our overall picture in terms of looking for a possible uh, uh, peak over the next week or two uh, in the S&P and the NASDAQ and so on. And finally, here's gold. Um, gold has surprised me in its strength. We s are at resistance. That resistance is holding so far. But if gold were to take off from here, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably going to have legs uh, and, and may go into some kind of parabolic short-term phase. But uh, for now, it's at resistance. That resistance is holding. If it does break from here, and particularly if it can break through the bottom of this uh, channel, I think we'd see at least a, a 1,200, and it's possibly much lower. You know, a major turn could occur if indeed, you know, the all-in-one uh, scenario with uh, the dollar stocks and gold uh, even takes hold for, uh, for a brief amount of time. Anyway, the main message here, next week, watch the market carefully. I think we are near a peak. Uh, that said, I'm not calling one yet. Uh, we want to see how it, it works out. Uh, this analysis is kind of like a GPS. 
it tells you, you know, wh where to go, what's likely to happen. But, you know, when you get to the intersection, uh, you want to look both ways and, and, and see what's actually going on. You don't want to just blindly follow uh, uh, this roadmap to the future because, uh, indeed, predicting the future is a tough business. So uh, we'll see. 11.57 remains the target. Uh, October 5th is the ideal date. Uh, I tend to think we're going to fall somewhat short of that, but we'll watch it next week. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.